This is the Sun Camper 31, and this is designed to be a really low cost and easy way to get afloat. It's designed predominantly for inland waterways, and it's just a very practical, sensible, comfortable boat. So we are, of course, going to do the full tour. And the most interesting thing to talk about, I think, first of all, is right at the back, because this one has an electric engine on it. It's the E-Propulsion X40. Now, this is a 40 kilowatt motor. And it's equivalent, they say, when you drive in the boat, as the same feel as a 50 horsepower outboard. And in fact, there is an option to have an outboard if you prefer. There's also an option to have an inboard diesel. So if you're somewhere like Norfolk Broads where it's difficult to get petrol and you don't want electric, then you have got a diesel option as well. Let's come right around here because then we can see it all the way around. There we go. It's designed to be an extremely practical, comfortable boat. And it does that well. Now this is the 31, there's a 29 version. And the 29 version basically has a much shorter bathing platform. They put this longer one on so you can walk the way around it. So for example, if you're berthed outside too, you can walk around the motor and into the boat easily. With the 29, you lose this back section and this becomes much shorter. Just depends what you want. That one there is a lift up section so you can tilt the motor or the outboard engine if you have it. And just while we're talking about motors, I will mention the range. Obviously that's quite important. This one's running four 100 amp 96 volt lithium ion phosphate batteries and that's giving it at four knots which is about five miles an hour which is a very typical river speed it's giving about 16 hours of running time so it's giving about 80 miles but typically for most people that's probably about three days of running and what's really important that they wanted to do is the ability to recharge it from a standard shore power so you go into a marina you don't need to have a special battery charging set up you can just plug it into the shore power and recharge it. Let's have a look on board. So if we're going through here, we've got the cockpit area here. And what they've done, they've kept everything nice and simple. So there's a canopy that comes down over here and that's rolled up into here. And there's also a sliding roof, but it's a manual roof. So this just pulls across when you want to close it. And then when you push it back, what it does is it then drops, you'll see it. There we go into place so that doesn't then roll backwards and forwards when you want to close it then of course you just lift it back up and slide it back again. The other thing to mention about that roof while we're here is if we look on top we've got solar panels on here these are not charging the motor battery these are charging the domestic battery so your domestics can run from there obviously you've got the plug-in shore power as well. Sliding door here and then we've got the saloon and the galley and they've kept this as light and as bright as possible We're putting these really big windows in that's an opening section just there but also there's a door next to the helm as well and another sliding roof exactly the same mechanism that literally just lifts and slides it's dead easy and it's never gonna go wrong that's the plan with that I'm gonna take you down here first of all because there's a cabin down here we're in quite a compact boat obviously but nonetheless, they've really squeezed some space into it. Look at this, double bed in here. Those are infill cushions back there. I'll show you where those go in just a moment. And we've got bits of storage about the place as well, like this and like this. And this does close off. You've got doors that come across here and then a sliding one above us, just here for a bit of privacy. Galley is opposite. It's gas cooking on this one. It's an oven, it's a grill, and it's the hob, of course. And then you've got the sink there and you've got the fridge under the helm seat, quite a decent sized fridge that one. And then of course bits of storage about a place like this. Again with the deep windows. And a bit more storage up here. Gas strut to hold it open. And we've got the, uh, the TV on a bracket up here as well if you want it. And then this is like a dinette area. Well, it's not like a dinette area, it is indeed a dinette area. <laughs> What they've done with this, which is quite clever, you see these hinges, this one folds over to here, and then this one, you can bring the backrest back, and the whole seat comes back with it like this. I won't take it all the way for obvious reasons. And you can see how it comes up and back and gives you space for your legs at the front. And the idea of that is you then with this back and that right back, you've got forward facing seating there. So when you're underway, that's a really nice place to sit. You've got forward facing seating here, there, and of course at the helm. 
another thing I'll show you just while we are in this area is those batteries. They are down under the floor in the centre, thusly, and they run all the way up through there. Obviously these ones lift as well. There we go. Let's carry on forward. Helm position is here. Got a bow thruster on this one. The interesting thing they were telling me is because the steering is electric, it's not like a cable or hydraulic, you can turn a massive amount of lock on and that um, electric motor will turn almost 90 degrees. So it acts almost like a stern thruster to push the stern sideways. So you've got the bow thruster to push the bow sideways and it makes it really maneuverable. Little Simrad multifunction display there. We've got two diesel heating systems on here. This one is central heating. This one's a hot water boiler because of course you're not heating it off the engine as you would normally be doing because it's an electric motor. You don't have the heat there. So you can switch that on about 30 minutes. You've got a, a boiler full of hot water, but it also has a single heater outlet down there. So if you just want to take the chill off, you can run that one, heat the water and get a little bit of hotter air into here. If it's a colder day, you put the central heating on. There's outlets right through the boat then in each of the cabins in the central area and also in the cockpit. There we go. It's nice and open though, isn't it? With that door like that and the sliding roof, that works pretty well. This roof actually has got a glass panel in it, so even when this is closed, you've still got plenty of light coming through here. And again, this is one of these ones that drops as it goes back to secure it. Thusly. There we go. Fantastic. I'm going to show you this because there's a few more stats on here, and if you're interested, you can pause it. and it'll hopefully give you perhaps a little bit more information than I've done. And if we carry on down here, well then we've got the forward cabin. Now what they've done with this is put a bed down in through here, which can be just a bit of storage area, could be for the dog, could be for a young child, use that however you wish, and then you've got double bed here. Or in fact, if you want to use this as two singles, so you've got a couple of kids that don't want to share, you could have the aft cabin for yourself, put a child up here and a child up here and they've got separate beds. So it just gives you that extra bit of flexibility. Forward facing window up there and then there's the hatch in here as well overhead. And the other thing that's up here is the heads. That's in here. This is quite clever because what they've done is this console here they've brought up to make this display area here. But what that also does is it gives you extra headroom in here. And that means, there we go, you can see that coming up through there. It means that in the shower part of this, you have actually got standing headroom. Look at that, that's great. It drops as you come forward. But then, of course, if you're up at that end, you're almost certainly in a seated position, <laughs> shall we say, and leave it at that. There we go. Decent little heads. The shower comes out of here, like so. And that one there is the back of the electronics. There we go. So if you need to get to wiring or any of that kind of stuff, it's easy to do so. There we are. Excellent little window in there, bits of storage, usual kind of thing. And they've even fitted a little mirror wave. There we go. It's well packaged, isn't it? Let's take a quick turn around the decks. I think what we'll do actually is we'll go right back and then work our way forward so I can show you this properly. So what we've got here is, I'm going to pop my shoes back on, asymmetric decks. Now what that means is they've maximised the cabin on this side, taking it out as far as they can. There's a very slim deck down this side, like so, and a rail. So you can get along there if you want to just you know, jump off with a fender or whatever else. It can be done, but your predominant route forward is over here. So we can flip this one over and just move it out the way like that. Nice handrail there. You've got the rails then as soon as you come out onto here. And we're out onto the side deck. There we go. Sun Camper 31. They've put a brake here right next to the helm. And the only thing we find with this is it's really low down. So it's a very easy boat to step on and off. Again, you know, if you're inland cruising, that kind of thing, that's dead handy for tying up in a lock, or just you know, accessing the boat generally. And in fact, what they've also done then is if we come forward, we've got this nice little foredeck area. 
It's a forward-facing seat. You can take the covers off, the uh, covers, the, take the um, upholstery, is the word I'm groping in the dark for, off. So slide that one off, take that one off, and that one will then fold down flat for when you're underway. Put a little table up here as well. And then there's also this door in the front, right up in the stem there. And that is so that if you are bow in to a pontoon, it's another way on and off, really easy to step onto the boat. And this is how she looks from here. Searchlight on this one, that's a TV aerial up there. We've got navigation lights as well. One piece windscreen, which is nice. And as we come right on round. As I say, it is doable. You could get down there, but it's not your predominant way around. And that's that sliding roof that we saw and the solar panels up on the top. There we go. That, my friends, is a very practical, sensible, and clever little inland cruiser. Massive thanks to Bray Marine Sales, who organised this tour and they sell these in the UK. I'll put a link for those guys in the description and a massive thanks to you all for watching. I'm going to be intrigued at your thoughts on that one, but I think that is an interesting little boat. And we'll catch you on the one of these real soon. Take care. Bye bye.